The whole point about the Band Aid thing was that because we, Gary and I have talked about this in quite a lot today because it was sort of how the Wrath thing came together. We had a guy called Dave McHale who was a, about a year or two ahead of me in school. Also one of the Dunleary mob because that, that's essentially who the Rats are, the Dunleary mob, out of one record shop called Murray's. And uh, we all hung down in the basement in a coffee bar down there, which had the best jukebox ever in the world, you know. So a Wurlitzer, perhaps? Uh, perhaps it was, but the, the, the music on it was by these three brothers. Oh, the content of yeah. yeah. So um, out of that came... It was a Winfield, actually. <laughs> oh, this is Mr. Wikipedia. <laughs> Not Mr. eBay. <laughs> no. uh, so... Uh, uh, <laughs> Dave, when, when we started using saxes and that, we said to Dave, come on, because he was a great musician. So Dave played with us, you know, as a sort of auxiliary rat. And um, he died. And before he died, though, I'd written this song because coming back from a tour, we dropped him off in North London. He went home and found his girlfriend dead in the loo from a five pound bag of smack. And he called me. I just arrived back at three and he called me. I was really tired. I couldn't get my head around what he was saying at all. And I was shocked, but also befuddled by the tour and tiredness and three. And I said something, God, that's ter terrible, man. Totally inadequate. Woke up the next day, you know, and realised what I'd said was inadequate. I suppose he talked to some of the other guys in the band. And I wrote the song Dave, which is Gary described earlier this morning as a letter to him about what I should have said to him. And again, we didn't really think it's a single. We just thought, oh, this, this one works. This is good. But it was a single and it's a good track and nothing. And we'd passed our time, basically mm. 10 years. And basically the world was telling us, thanks very much, lads, mm. moving right along. But anyway, so I'm very depressed by Dave. And we did everything. I literally mean everything. Gary and Simon got on their motorbikes because they're two bikers. Mm. And I got the list of chart return shops. How that used to work was that um, the, the, the people who compiled the charts had a list of prescribed shops and they would then file how many they'd sold each week of each thing. And they had a checklist of the shop opposite. And they'd check whether they sold six of the Boomtown Rats. And if they hadn't sold six, then something was happening. Something there was, was a stab. So we had very little money. Gary and Simon went off with some cash and had the list of uh, record return shops and went to one shop and bought one and went to the other. So we tried to hype it into the charts because we heard the Talking Heads had done that with Psycho Killer. I so heard that boys we could do that. Once or twice yeah. with Louis Walsh. So, <laughs> so like, but even that didn't work. So I went home that night very depressed. I just had a kid. Uh, so I thought the best years of my life were over. I'm 30 or whatever. I've got a young family. Uh, what do I do? You know, how do we how do we make this work again? And you're fighting the, this overwhelming tidal wave of of modern of fashion, and uh, on comes the news report of the famine. Is this the Michael Burke BBC? Yeah. yeah. So Paula then was crying. She wasn't weeping. She was just like crying, and possibly because we had a kid. But the fact that we weren't doing well is indicative because I was at home. Now, Sting, the others were all away, mm. Spandau, Duran, literally were all away. They were the new kids, all away doing tours, interviews, recordings. We were at home. That's the first sign that mm. you're not doing well. Mm. So I was at home at six watching the news. I shouldn't have been. Mm. Because we weren't having hits, I was had no confidence anymore in my writing. And Paula left a note in the, on the kitchen table saying anyone who comes to this house has to put a quid into this bowl she'd gone north to do the tube she was a presenter of a rock right. yeah. and I rang her at Newcastle I said who's there and she said Midge Midge we knew of course very well from Lizzie and from Ultrafox Midge came I said did you see that thing last night and he said he said no and I said it to him I said look I, th I think we should try and get everyone together and just do it we'd make a hundred grand and give it to me he said yeah okay if you want to because if you've got a song and I was Mortified, I said, no, 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 really, but let's do a cover. He said, no, f f do a cover. He said, he said, I'll, I'll, I'll knock something off and you do something. And the fact that a guy who just had Vienna dum, and others, dum, dum, you know, dum. and he was saying that treating me as an equal gave me some confidence back. So I played the Rats a song called It's My World. And the opening line was It's My World and There's No Need to Be Afraid. They said, no, come on, we've done something like that before, which is why our records always were different because they always said, no, we've done that. 
And so trying to clutch onto something, I got in a taxi to visit a friend of mine who was ill. And in the taxi over, I just changed the words to it's Christmas time, isn't it? And I wrote all the words out straight away. And at his place, I picked up a guitar and did the basic melody. And Midge sent me a track with do, a tape that afternoon with do, 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 do. And, and I called him and I said, it's that's Zed cars. Do you remember, <laughs> do you remember that, yeah. that thing? And, and he goes, it's better than any you come up with, you know. And, uh, and he was right. And, uh, and I went around and we banged them together and then did the classic sitting opposite each other for the middle and the end. And what I wanted was a declamatory song a la Woody Guthrie, John Lennon, Bob Dylan. Obviously, I'm not putting myself anywhere near there, but something, and I think I did, you know, my mind was happy Christmas, war is over, give peace a chance. I'd, I, so I wrote, I did Feed the World because they were the chords and he wrote very, very Scottish, let them know it's Christmas time, here's to you. Mm. Raise a glass to everyone. That was Midge, you know, Hogmanay, Scottish, all that. Where Monday. I get deep pleasure from it is we've spent £5,000 every single day of the year for the last 30 years since 1985 because of that record. And it it would have been a rat's track had the rats been doing well. But because they weren't, we had to ask all the friends we'd made over 10 years yeah. to sing that. Though the rats were on that record, of course. Corks 96 FM.